What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and I am here today with the review for Laugh After Lockup. You guys, we are back. We are back. We are back. We are back. So, you guys, um, before we go ahead and get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other on the channel and are not subscribed to the channel, then I need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. And you guys know you can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning your post notifications on, and sharing the video, you guys. So, this episode, so I will say, I forgot to say this a few minutes, just a minute ago, but this is, I believe this is season four, it could be season three. So, on my guide, on my channel guide, it says season three, episode one, but on their website, it says season four, episode one of Life After Lockup. So, they finally have split it up, it looks like it. So, um, name of this episode is Can't Stop Destiny, you guys. So, let's go ahead and discuss this episode. So, you guys, this episode... I'm going to start up with the couple who I think that their storyline is just fake as hell, is bullshit. But I think we, but we've been saying this for the last few seasons. That is Brittany and Marcelino, and I like Brittany and Marcelino. I do, but at this point, Brittany and Marcelino, they ain't doing nothing but playing in our faces, right? Because you guys remember, last season their storyline was the fact that she wanted to do the sober living house with Kane and them, and they got duped, right? So this season, now the situation is she is in real estate and she's showing $3 million houses, which I'm not saying it, it couldn't happen, but girl, come on. This is a few months after last season finished, y'all finished. It's not a year, it's a few months. So I don't bit much more buy anything that Brittany and Marceline are saying. Then Brittany is saying that, you know, after the threesome they had with her ex-girlfriend, Things between she and Marcelino, they are not good. And then at one point in the episode, we see Marcelino. He's texting someone. I'm under the impression that he was texting Brittany. I, I feel like the producers like Brittany and Marcelino and that the producers will just basically come up with any kind of storyline for Brittany and Marcelino so that way they stay on the show. And again, I like I said, I like Brittany and Marcelino, but this, this here, this ain't real, this is bullshit. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. Nothing about this seems like it's real to me. Just per just keeping it real with you guys. I don't buy this storyline. But you guys can let me know if you buy it. So then we later see her as she's out selling a house, right? So I'm kind of confused. The guy was talking about turning her phone off, you know, not to upset, you know, not to ruffle, miss, you know, not to throw off the cus the clients right but you got a whole ass camera crew right here you got a whole ass person you got a person over her with a boom you got a person over y'all with a boom a boom mic maybe they might have a boom they may have a boom microphone they probably do they probably have somebody with a boom and then you guys have mic packs on but okay and then Marcelino showed up with the kids because at one point they made a plan that he was going to meet her and drop off the kids. He literally dropped off the kids. He was in the truck. He left that truck there and he got in the car and left. I was like, well, damn. Again, I don't believe their storyline, but hey. And they're not the only person. They're not the only couple whose storyline I don't buy this season. There's another couple that I don't buy their storyline. I literally feel like they're doing this just so that they can get back on the show. And you guys can pretty much probably guess who the hell I'm talking about. Child, let's pause here and move forward. All right, you guys. Next up, let's go ahead and just get them out the way. Because this is a sad storyline. Branwen and Chaz. Um... So with Branwen and Chaz, I, I tweeted this. I really, I, I hope and pray it's a no. But my gut is telling me that Branwen is back on drugs because I, that woman doesn't seem happy at all. Like nothing, I mean, she married Big Boo from Orange is the New Black. And she just, she didn't want to marry him. So she's still, you know, she, she's still fresh out of prison. And... She's at her friend's house, so I think she says she took up some kind of... I know she took up a trade, right? Where she knows how to repair things and fix things. So something went wrong in her friend's kitchen, and her friend is, you know, giving her the, letting her do the work. So then she tells them that Chaz is coming, and she wants to take Chaz out. So they say, let's go to a strip club, and you can give him a lap dance. I was like, uh, uh, no, 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 we can't do that. 
that's not gonna work she's not interested in, in him like there is no attract she has no attraction to the man I think and these are my this is my thoughts I feel like when she was in prison that I ain't gonna say when she was in prison I think that she has I think that well you know what it, I think it could be because of prison because you know she's talking about how she gained some weight while she was in prison I think her confidence and her I think she, her confidence level has gone down I don't think she finds herself attractive so the fact that Chaz finds her attractive that kind of boosts her you know her up a little bit but not that much because she's again like I said she's just not really into Chaz I don't see how Chaz don't see that Actually, Chaz might see it, but Chaz just doesn't give a shit. But her friends tell her that they want her to be happy, and they don't believe that she's happy with Chaz. And I was like, I second that. I don't think that she's happy with Chaz. I really don't. Y'all, then this scene with Chaz and his band. This scene with Chaz and his band, I was like, girl, what in the hell is this? First thing that threw me off was with his band members, the two guys that he was talking to them contacts i was like there is no way in hell i would have went to that concert when i saw them contacts i'm like oh those contacts are creepy you know what we're gonna go do you need a refund you can keep it i don't need the refund we're fine then i'm gonna talk about that man when he, i'm gonna talk about it in the, i'm gonna get to it in a minute so chaz is telling his band members about him and him and um Brandwin, how they got married but they haven't had <laughs> they haven't had sex with each other i'm like chaz is that all you care about is sex right so then he tells them that when she got released from prison that her ex aaron was there right chaz leave aaron alone if it came down to a fight between you and aaron aaron would wear you out like a rag doll so i'm gonna I'm tell you right now don't mess with aaron leave aaron alone don't mention aaron when you see aaron Pretend like Aaron is a brick wall that you can't, you know, pretend like Aaron is a, is a wall. You're like, oh, there's a wall here. Let me go around. Let me go, you know, the other way. Like, I'm going to need you to do that when it comes to Aaron because Aaron is going to wear you out. So, here is what threw me for the loop, you guys. So, Chaz and his band. Now, mind you, he called. So, Brandon is going to be watching the performance. But not in the way that you think she is. Branwyn is watching the performance via FaceTime. I was like, girl, what? <laughs> Not FaceTime, but what like I said, what really threw me with Chaz and Branwyn was when he was performing with his band, that man was on stage with a damn machete. I was like, why does this man have a machete in his hand? Baby, what I mean, oh God, can you I mean, can you think of all the things the the, the um things that could happen with that? Like you can like you people it happens all the time where you have stuff in your hand and you just accidentally uh, but a machete the man had a machete on top of seeing them them color them weird looking contacts and that machete i would have been like you know what god i hear you you don't want me to be here right okay let's get our stuff and let's go because this is a no for me honey no 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 nah boo boo we got to go like the it was the context the first thing that threw me off was them contacts i was like um i'm scared then it was the machete for me I, and then that machete looked dull i was like oh no that is a liability that is a walking liability if he throws that if i mean you got you are wielding a machete i couldn't get past the machete I couldn't get past that, you guys. Child, I couldn't get past it. Ooh, let's pause here, you guys, and let's move forward. You guys, let's go ahead and talk about Taylor and Chance. I don't know why Taylor and Chance are back. I didn't like Taylor and Chance last season with Love After Lockup. I don't like it. And it's not even Taylor that I don't like. It's Chance. I just don't trust Chance. Something is just not, something in my spirit when it comes to Chance, it just doesn't, it, they don't mesh well. And I don't see it for him in the same respect that Bobby doesn't see it for him. Bobby and I are on the same page. So the so the scene with them open up with Chance asking her daughters, what did they think about the proposal? One of the daughters said it was boring. 
she straight up told him it was boring. So then, you know, Bobby's like, you know, not Bobby, but Taylor's like, well, you know, I liked it, but I haven't told Bobby yet. But, you know, I'm worried about telling Bobby that me and Chance are engaged. Oh, her voice is so annoying. So she went to tell, you know, Bobby. So, you know, me and Chance, you know, we went out with the girls and he proposed to me, you know. And, you know, it's like, it's really kind of like what I dreamed, well, not what I dreamed of, you know. One of them had the sign, they each had a sign and it said, will you marry me? Oh, God, girl. I I really feel bad for Taylor because I, with Taylor, I don't feel like her elevator dings. I don't feel like the doorbell dings. I just don't feel like anything with Taylor dings. I don't feel like anything with her dings. And I'm happy that she has Bobby in her life because Bobby has some, although we know Bobby has a past with drugs and whatnot, Bobby still has discernment and she has great discernment when it comes to chance. Because he's not, he's not what, because she said, you know, you haven't really saw who he really is and 100% and you have him around your young girls. Baby, that bothers me that she has him around her young kids. That's what bothers me. So, um, Bobby thinks it's too soon and I agree with her on that one. I really do agree with her. So, she was talking about, you know, she will, she will, if she has to, she will object and Chance came in and he was like, what? I don't blame her. Like, that is her twin sister. We don't know you. You just got out of prison. These are my nieces. Like, you, and I'm not saying that, and I'm not saying that Chance is you guys, so I don't want anybody to get offended. But Chance could be a, you know, a rapist. He could be a child abuser. He could be so many things. And that's my issue when it comes to Taylor. You are putting your daughters in harm's way. I'm not saying that he will do anything to your daughters, but that potential is so high. This is a man that you don't know. I just, like I said last season, and I'm going to say it again this season, I wouldn't put my children around anybody that I don't know. If we, granted, Taylor's like, you know, but we talked before he got out of prison. That doesn't mean anything. When they in prison, they're going to say whatever the hell they got to say to get to the next day. So he could be blowing smoke up your butt. But hey, she likes it. So then Chance is telling her, um, Taylor and Bobby that he wants to give one of the girls her own room. And then he'll build a room in the garage for Bobby. No, what you do is you go. Um. So yeah, you. what you need to do, Chance, is you need to go and get a, a place for yourself, right? Do that for us. Go get your own place. Like, I just don't understand Taylor. I really don't. I, I, I try to understand Taylor, but I can't. But what I can do is pray for those girls. Because their mother, I just, I mean, I'm not saying she's a, and I'm not going to say she's a bad parent. I don't want to say that. But I don't think she has her best, her daughter's best interest at heart. Because I just couldn't bring a complete stranger around my children. I, I just couldn't. But hey, thank God for Bobby. Thank God for Bobby. So let's pause here, you guys, and let's go ahead and move forward. All right, you guys, next up, let's talk about Kevin and Tiffany. So Kevin and Tiffany are back. Surprise, surprise. I wasn't expecting to see Kevin and Tiffany, to be quite honest with you. But they're here, and they're still in a relationship with each other. Now, Tiffany is not staying with um, Kevin. She has a roommate. She also has a job. She says she works at a Mexican restaurant. There are so many Mexican restaurants in Texas, so... Yeah, I would never find her because there are so many, especially over there in Arlington. But hell, there's so many throughout the DFW, my hometown. So, yeah. So he goes and picks her up. Right. So you guys remember the thing with them was last season that he was he was talking to Kayla. But then you remember they had the argument with each other when he got the text messages and the phone calls. So then she suggested that they have an open relationship or bring another person into the relationship, right? So they're still on this tip of bringing a, in another person to the relationship. Okay. 
I feel like with her, you know, when, and now that I'm saying it, saying it to myself and I'm saying it out loud, that gives me storyline too, right? That gives me a bit of a, that gives me slight storyline that, hey, he's on this show. To stay on this show, let's come up with this fake ass storyline that we're, we're going to have, we're going to um, have an open relationship and we're going to bring somebody in because we still ain't going to bring anybody into the relationship. We're still dealing with Kayla. So she wants to set some ground rules with Kevin. So the ground rules are that when it comes to them having the third party into a relationship, she wants to be able to pick that person. Okay, I guess. I, I ain't got nothing to say about it. So then we see them. I guess she spent the night with him. So he's, he wakes up. His phone is ringing. once, Kind of like what happened last season. You guys remember when they went walking with the dog. That's when they got into that big ass fight with each other because his phone phone went off which I think it was a producer that time this time it's, it's real it's Kayla this time is literally real because we saw the text message and she was sending message after message after message so she asked him who was it he said it was his grandmother and then he, he just kept lying to her. I'm like dude just tell her the truth and ain't that big of a deal she already is okay she you guys have already okay that you guys are going to have a third person into the relationship Hell, why don't y'all just bring Kayla into the shit? Like, damn. That way you ain't got to sneak around. Like, Kevin ain't that bright. Got to be real, kid, with you. Kevin ain't that bright. Like, dude. Are you? I mean, you got a perfect situation. Your girlfriend is saying, let's bring another person into the relationship. Obviously, the sex with Kayla is good to you because you're still dealing with Kayla. So why don't you talk to Kayla and be like, hey, Kayla, so me and um and um Tiffany, we want to bring you into into the relate. We want to have a threesome with you. Now, will Kayla probably flip out? One hundred percent. I'm pretty positive Kayla will lose her shit. So in the text messages, I mean, she was because he was getting ready to go to work. So Tiffany left the room. So the producer like, what does the text message say? Can you read it to us? So he, I mean, and they showed him on the screen, baby, she was pissed. Like I told you a few minutes ago, it was message, because it's at one point, it was up to five messages from Kayla. So she just, you know, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't like when people do that. I can't stand when people, I can't stand when people do that. Like you send, a, you text, I'm, we texting. Now I'm cool if you send like two, if it's two or three bubbles, but if it's five, if it's like you send one text message, then you send another one, then you send another one, then you send another one, then you send another one. It's like, bitch, stop. Let me respond to the first one. Like, let me respond to the first one. I'm cool with one or two. I'm cool with one or two, maybe even three. Three is where I, three is it. But when you send them four and five and six and seven, I'm like, damn, why don't you just type out the whole fucking paragraph? Like, do that. Like, I'll do that. Like, if I... If I send one message, I'm like, oh, I forgot to say this. Then I'll send a second one. But I'm not gonna send. I'm not gonna send one, two, three, four, and five to you. So basically, what she was saying to him in a nutshell is like, I see you with this woman. Who, you, you know, she gonna whoop her ass basically. So then, you know, he's getting ready for work, like I said, and she gotta go to work. So she's like, you know, since you're getting ready to go to work and I gotta go to work, and your job and my job is like literally close to here, I'll just hang out here. So he's like, okay. So he gave her a key to his place, right? So then, you know, when he left, Kayla called him on the phone and she was pissed. So she said, they have a profile on Tinder. I was like, a profile on Tinder? So is, is Tinder, has Tinder now turned into like Facebook or something like that? So she's pissed off about that. Girl, if you can't, if you can't beat her, join him. I'm just saying. If you can't beat them, join them. That's all I got to say. Let's pause here, you guys, and let's move forward. Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and talk about the couple that I think is faking. Lindsay and Deontay. So, Deontay and Lindsay, I knew this prior to the season starting. People had been telling me that they were in a relationship with each other, and I saw it on social media. So, I knew that they were seeing each other. And I know, like, they did a they did a. I don't know if they did like a special or something, but it was it was Brittany and Marcelino, no, or was it just Brittany and Deontay? But they found out that he was dating um, Lindsay, crazy Lindsay, the one that was with Scott with the lip, <laughs> with the lip. So she's back. 
and she's back with a black scent. I was like, where'd this black scent come from? So now that you're dating a black dude, a dumbass black dude at that, you got a black scent. Deontay must have a thing for being being mistreated by white women. I'm just, I'm going out on, I think he has a thing for white women abusing him and mistreating him because he had it with Nicole. Now he got it with this woman, Lindsay. So Lindsay, you guys remember, she went back to prison and you guys remember last season, we, the last season we saw her, she destroyed Scott's house, right? So Scott had her arrested. She says, and Scott is my kind of petty. Scott sent her a ha-ha note every, he, he would send her a ha-ha note and a penny every week. I was like, girl, that is petty. But that is me. That is me. So um, she calls Deontay after she got out of prison. Her friend picked her up. His name is Blaine, by the way. So he asked, I think he was asking if her mom picked her up. She says no, that she didn't pick her up. Her friend, her, um, her friend, her male friend picked her up. He was like, your male friend? I was like, you getting played, nigga. You're getting played. And I, I really don't feel bad for Deontay. I really don't. Because he's a, he's, a, he's a dummy. He's a dumb dumb. So... Then we see her. So her and her friend, they rolling around. So she's going to go look for a job eight hours out of prison, right? So she got a call that one of her friends, TC, was arrested. She knows a lot about, you know, since because she was like, you know, you weren't driving. So why did you say your name? It's a no license. It's a no name state. I was like, girl, you just putting all the business out there on television then she went further and she's you know she was they need they need to get the bail money and it has to be cash i think they said 789 dollars so she pulls out a watch she pulls out a, uh, some hundred dollar bills and she was like you know huh, i had this money you know this is my drug money i had blaine hold it for me and i was like what so you're admitting on camera that you had someone hold drug money for you but then i looked at that money i was like wait a minute that money is way too crisp to be old. So when were you selling drugs? Were you selling drugs while you were in prison? Then she can't go down to the jail because she got um, she got active warrants. I was like, how did they let you out of prison with active warrants? I, okay. That's why I don't think that this storyline is 100% real. I don't. I think that they are doing things to just be on TV, but you guys can let me know what you think in the comment section below, and we're going to pause here and wrap up the episode, and I don't know why I chose these two for last. Sean and Sarah, you guys are last. So you guys know Sean and Sarah, they're getting married, right? Sarah is currently five months pregnant. Sarah's still a bitch. And I don't take that back. Sarah's still a bitch. I don't like Sarah. I would prefer, oh my God, if we can just go through, you know, as much as I complain about Brittany and Marcelino with their fake ass storylines, Sean is one person I just cannot stomach seeing. His face just, his, his face is just, oh God, Sean is annoying. I can't stand Sean. Oh, you guys, Sean, 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 Sean. Who, Sean? My blue. Oh. Don't get your pressure up because Sean is the type of. Mm, mm. Oh, Sean is a piece of shit. I cannot stand Sean. Kelly. Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. I am speaking to you directly, Kelly. Take this man for whatever he has. I don't give a damn if it's a dollar. Make sure that that man is broke and destitute i don't want him to have a moments of peace and especially with that little bitch that he is with sarah i don't want them to know a minute of peace oh it's a special place in hell for these two it's a special place in hell for sean and sarah i get it that sarah is 28 years old but when you know better, you do better. And this little, mm, 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 mm. why did I save them for last? Why did I save them for last? I, I loathe Sarah and Sean, you guys. I loathe those two. If you, ooh. I don't even know if I can review their scene, you guys, because it just pisses me off. 
it infuriates me because when I think about Sean, I still go back to that first season where we met Sean, where he took his daughter to his daughter for school shopping to Plato's Closet. You took her to Plato's Closet. You you spent so much money on Destiny, but you didn't do it for your kids. You're doing you doing everything for Sarah. You want to be stepfather to her daughter, but you won't even be a father to your own kids. I'm getting pissed. You won't be a father to your own fucking kids. I can't stand that. You guys, I'm just... He pisses me off. He pisses me off, you guys. He pisses me off. He pisses me off. I can't stand him. I can't stand Sean. I can't stand Sean. I can't stand him. Oh, I can't stand Sean. I can't stand Sean. I can't stand Sean. So Sean and Sarah, you guys, they went shopping for the wedding, her, her wet, you know, for the, the venue. breathe get yourself together they went shopping for the venue you guys so sarah no no sean's phone was ringing right so only one of his children is coming to the wedding that should say something to you that only one of your children are coming to the wedding that should say something to you that you are not a good father to your kids that should tell you something and my eyes are getting red because i'm getting pissed you guys my eyes are red and i can see it that should tell you something that you are not a good father to your children. All but you got six kids, but only one of them is coming, and the one that's in Sarah's stomach is gonna be there, because it is it's in her stomach. But your other kids are not coming. Not all of his kids are babies, because you got that teenage daughter. If she wanted to come, I'm pretty sure she would tell her mother, "I want to go to my dad's wedding." But also, I probably, I also feel like they might not even know shit about this wedding because this son that showed up knew nothing about Sarah the wedding. He knows about destiny. Sarah, you are a dumbass. Mm. So his phone kept ringing. He said it was Kelly. This is where this little bitch pissed me off. She pissed me off talking about it's embarrassing that Kelly calls him. She is irritated with it. That is the mother of his kids. What are you talking about? She says, I don't care if it's Jesus. Mm. Oh, that little bitch. That little bitch. And I apologize, you guys, because I don't like calling women bitches, but she deserves it. That little bitch. Oh, that little bitch. Her and him can go straight to hell. Talking about get Kelly under control. <sighs> Karma is a bitch. That part I will say. Karma is a bitch. Karma's gonna come back to you. Just know that, Sarah. So then Sean and Sarah are meeting up with his sister and his son and his nephew. Mind you, Sarah, you're a dumbass. They don't know about you being pregnant. They know about you guys getting married. And then his son, again, like I just said, I got ahead of myself, but I meant to do that. His son only knows about destiny, nothing about you. That should tell you something. There's something mentally wrong with the likes of Sean. There is mentally something wrong with that dumbass man. You guys, I'm, I'm trying to wrap this up so I can, cause I, I, I gotta, I gotta get myself back together. I have to, I have to, I have to. So when they, they ask, the sister asks them, what is the sex of the, the gender of the baby? They don't know because they're going to have a gender, um, a gender, a new, a, a cake that reveals his gender. The sister says it is a shotgun wedding. They said no. Sean and his son went out looking for try on suits. I have an issue with this son because he is talking about how his mother is dramatic. Um, your mama might be dramatic, but your mama is not wrong when it comes to your father. Your father is a sack of shit. Mm. Okay. I ain't got nothing for it. <laughs> because you mm, mm, mm. let's keep going let's let's wrap up he didn't know nothing about he, he knew nothing you knew nothing about this woman or that she was pregnant but your mama is dramatic okay and you wonder why your mom is dramatic when it comes to your dumb ass father 
All right. So at the end of the episode, Destiny called Sean and she told Sean, well, she didn't tell Sean. She told us she's pregnant. Now, I don't know if that's Sean's baby or not. I, 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 I don't know. We all know how Destiny is. Destiny is a con artist, so it could be she could be with another guy and that's his baby and she just wants some money from Sean. Girl, do whatever you can. You, you know what? The people that I would love to suck Sean drive his money, Kelly first and then Destiny. I don't care. I want him to be destitute. I don't want him to have a moment of peace. No peace whatsoever. If you can, If you can't do right by your kids, no good should come to you. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Leave your comments, you guys, in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on your post notifications. Share the video, you guys. And until the next time, stay safe. Take care of yourselves, you guys. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Socially distance. Be blessed. I'll see you guys in the next one, you guys. I am so sorry that I got so heated towards the end with Sean. But he just, he just, he just boils my blood. But I'll see you guys later.